Hey everybody, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. In this video, what we're going to take a look at is what happens when we have more than three conductors in a conduit. Okay, so if we are sizing, or not even rather sizing a conduit, but if we're sizing our branch circuit conductor sizes, one of the things we need to take into account is obviously external factors like uh, if there's ambient heat higher than 30 degrees, or in this case, if there's more than three conductors in a conduit. Okay, so what's going to happen essentially, we know that if we have our conductor building up around that conductor directly proportional to the amount of current flow through that conductor, there's going to be magnetic lines of force. Those mag magnetic lines of force interacting with each other are going to cause things like excessive heat inside those conductors, which reduces the overall ampacity of those conductors, which means that our conductors that we would normally choose from tables 1, 2, 3, and 4 are no longer sufficient to carry the ampacity required by the load. So, uh, what we're going to do is take a look at this very specific example. In this example, we have our 120, 240 volt single phase three wire panel and we just want to make note all terminations are 75 degrees okay and if we take a look over here we have our loads this is going to supply a we're going to say this is a 35 amp we're going to keep it nice and simple non-continuous 75 degree termination temperatures and from our bottom conduit we are going to supply a 63 amp non-continuous just standard loads right so again 75 degree terminations we'll keep everything as simple as possible just so we can kind of get the foundations of using these new tables here so we have more than three conductors we'll make a point again here rw90 xlpe unjacketed conductors okay one of the things to keep in mind whenever we're doing any type of branch circuit sizing obviously is 4-006 sub rule 1 where we do know the lowest termination temperature that's what's going to win so in this case we know that 75 degrees we technically have 75 at our panel 75 at our loads and we have a 90 degree insulation the 75 degree is the trump that's the one that's going to win when we eventually go to table 2 to select our um, our branch circuit conductors Okay, so with that all in mind, first thing we need to do is figure out what size normally would supply these conductors, because in these conduits, uh, let's put some voltages on there so we know how many conductors are in there. We're going to say this is a 120 slash 240 volt three wire load. And up here we just have a 240 volt load. Okay, so to size the conductors in those conduits, it's pretty straightforward. We know that table two is based off of copper conductors, no more than three conductors, and let's specify current carrying conductors in a conduit, all of that jazz, right? So we're going to take our 38 amps, and we're going to go to table two, 75 degree column, because again, 4006 tells me that that's my winner is a 75 degrees, and it tells me at table two that we are going to go with, how about a number eight good for 50 amps that's what we would supply to our load in this conduit right here we would have those two number eights right so no more than three current carrying conductors there my 63 amp load we're going to do the same thing so we're going to take 63 amps we're going to go table to 75 degrees and we are going to select how about a number six good for 65 amps again that's in this conduit supplying my load Hey, okay, that's all fine. Again, no more than three current carrying conductors. If we look at that 12240, what we actually have is we have two hots, one identified neutral. Right? So we have two current carrying conductors in that conduit. What we're concerned with primarily in this example is the conductors in this conduit. Because if we look at what's actually supplied out there, we have two conductors that are current carrying for the 240 volt load and we have two current carrying conductors that supply the 120 240 volt load. I know you're thinking about that neutral but that neutral does not count as a current carrying conductor. 
right? What we're really looking at is the current carrying equivalent conductors. And when we have a three phase, sorry, not a three phase, a three wire Edison circuit like our 122 40 volt, really what we're looking at is if we take a quick look at it, I'll do a real quick example down here. All right, let's say this is my, maybe it's something similar to a range or a dry or something like that. Uh, we should have drawn that a different way. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to redraw that real quick for you so it's a little bit less confusing. So this is kind of a standard Edison 3-wire. I do have a video on Edison 3-wire if you dig around in my video library there, but just to simplify, we'll keep it like this. There's our identified neutral conductor, and maybe there's our big 240-volt element or something like that. Either way, if this guy here is, say, 2 amps, and this is 8 amps, really what we're looking at is the equivalent on this neutral conductor at this point right now. If I have 2 amps coming in here, and we're going to ignore the 240 volt load for now, uh, and we're just going to focus on our two 120 volt loads, right? So we have 120 volt, 120 volt, and our 240 volts across both coils. What we're going to have is basically the difference between those two loads. If I have 2 amps going this way, and I have 8 amps going this way, on our actual neutral, what we have is the equivalent of 6 amps coming out to this junction right here, which meets up with our 2 amps and gives us our 8 amps required at our other load. Now, if we look at the numbers that we're, we're using here, coming back on this conductor, we have 8 amps. Going out on this conductor, we have 2 amps. If we look at what the equivalent is of these two conductors together, we have the equivalent of two 8 amp conductors. Even if we were to open one of those lines, we will never see more than the equivalent of what those conductors can carry. So when we talk about our neutrals, we don't consider our neutrals to be current carrying conductors. Okay, so back to our original problem. We know that we have two current carrying conductors in our 122 40 volt circuit. We have two current carrying conductors in our 240 volt circuit, which means that we have a total of four current carrying conductors. Now, if this was a video to size the conduit, absolutely that neutral conductor would come into play. Then we would have the to a total of five conductors, but when we're si or, uh, determining ampacities and sizing branch circuits, then that neutral conductor does not come into play. So, what happens if we have more than three current carrying conductors? Well, four dash zero zero four sub rule one item C tells me I am going to go to table 5C. Table 5C is our correction factors for more than three conductors in a conduit. Okay, so all of my ampacities that I have from table 1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, for example, my number 6 is usually good for 65 amps under the conditions that we've mentioned. However, if I start to look at more conductors in a conduit than what table two is based off of, well, now I'm gonna have a reduced ampacity. So I could go through the long arduous process of going, well, a 65 amp conductor times whatever table 5C is can carry this much. Well, it's not big enough. Well, what about the next size up? Let's multiply it by whatever the correction factor is. No, well, it's still not big enough, right? So we're gonna kind of skip that process and make this nice and easy, okay? So what we're gonna do is determine what size conductors I'm going to run in this conduit right here. Okay, so we're going to start with our 38 amp load. We know that at this point here, there's only two current carrying conductors, so it's fine. We've already done the math. We know that it's going to be number eight, but we want to determine if we can still use a number eight or if we're going to have to go with a bigger conductor based off the fact that there's more conductors in the conduit now. So we're going to go 38 amps. Okay. Table 5C, if I go check out Table 5C, it tells me if I have more than three conductors, less than six, we are going to go with 0.8 as a correction factor. Essentially what that's saying is any conduit, or sorry, any conductor that I do select will have an ampacity of 80% of its original from Table 2. So again, we're not going to go through the long-winded process of applying the correction factor to the ampacity of each conductor. All we're going to do is essentially hyperinflate that load to accurately select the conductor 
first try. All right, so we're going to take that 38 amps and we are going to divide it by the 0.8 correction factor that we've determined from table 5C. 38 amps divided by 0.8 gives me, we should be looking at about 47.5 amps, which is great. That means when we go table 2 now to select, we're still going to go with that number 8 conductor. So inside this conductor, or conduit rather, we still have a number 8. Well, two of them to supply that 240 volt load. That's fine. We're going to take a look now at this 63 amp load. So we're going to take again, we're going to take our 63 amps. We're going to hyperinflate it or artificially inflate it by the 80% correction factor of table 5C. 63 divided by 0.8 should give me 78.75 amps. Now this is where we see a change. Previously, what we would see in this conduit here was our number six. But now because we have multiple conductors in a conduit, more than three conductors in a conduit creating those magnetic fields, which is giving us extra heat, those number sixes no longer have the sufficient ampacity to carry the load. So we now need a conductor that has a minimum ampacity of 78.75. Table two, 75 degrees, tells me that we are going to select a number four good for 85 amps. That 85 amps at 80% will happily carry that 63 amp load even with the extra heat from the multiple conductors in the conduit. So inside this conduit we have our three or sorry our two number eights. Inside this conduit we would also have three number four augs, right? We'd have two hots and our identified neutral that would supply that 63 amp 120 slash 240 volt load. So hopefully this has helped again. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.